but hopefully that wasn't the case and they just hatched and they got out the way but I fear the worst for them but if they hadn't this guy would have been on the prowl trying to find those lapwing eggs and now the thing is is when they do go near a lapwing egg you'll find the lapwings are very very clever they'll be able to push and come and they pretend like they've got broken wings and they'll cry and make a lot of noise and the monitor lizard then looks at them and gets distracted and so the lapwing will slowly move away from the eggs and pull that monitor lizard away and protect the eggs it really is quite phenomenal to watch that interspecies relationship between monitors and lapwings as well as monitors and crocodiles if there was a crocodile here with eggs you'd find that monitor lizard would be ch getting chased all over the place by a crocodile to keep it away and look how it's using its tongue you see how it goes over the mud it uses that tongue to taste what's going on so it's effectively the way that a lot of the animals out here like the mammals will smell and will try and use their sense of smell to s figure out what's going on the monitor lizard is exactly the same it uses its tongue to taste what's going on and to try and find what is here hidden in the mud and if there is anything that they can potentially grab now Jenny animation you say it's a water dragon they do look a bit dragony don't they as they slither through the water I suppose this is where Loch Ness monster came from is something like this I would imagine that a big monitor lizard would look quite scary on a bit of film now, it seems as though as we're sitting here just more and more animals are arriving as our monitor lizard negotiates his muddy terrain you can see impalas coming running down there's a couple naughty boys sparring on that area over there and they just having a little push and behind them is a nyala bull that's also making his way down there he comes so we've got the impalas and the nyalas and then this biggest surprise of all is our three buffalo bulls now i think that these three buffalo bulls have arrived in perfect time they've arrived to set the stage for an epic lion day sunset safari because the Inkuhuma pride is not lying that far away from here vultures nest in a straight line is not that far and if they hear these buffalo grunt or bellow given how thin the Inkuhumas are I wouldn't be surprised that they head in this direction and potentially hunt these guys this afternoon and evening so it might be a really epic afternoon I would imagine now it will still be quite sedate as the buffalo wallow and it's hot and the lions are probably sleeping but later in the afternoon the Inkuma Pride where they were this morning might pick up the scent also the wind is blowing from north to south which is in the way of the lions and if the lions pick it up I wouldn't be surprised if we see them turning up at the dam and having a look at these buffalo which would be a great way to finish our day now I'm going to spend some time with all of our animals the myriad that there are here and while we do that I believe Tara is with some very spotty very cute animals hiding away from the bright Sun <laughs> well I, th I think some people might debate that <laughs> whether it's cute or not but I think certainly those cubs are very cute so we thought we'd stop by the hyena den on the way to try to relocate the lions that Tristan found this morning Good afternoon, my name is Tara and joining me on camera is my old partner in crime, Sebastian. <laughs> and it is wonderful to be teamed with I Sebastian thought... again. Yeah. Sorry, I've left yeah. you hanging there, didn't I? I thought you were waving to everybody. <laughs> yeah. Hello to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we'll, we'll get back in sync again, it's fine. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, very excited for seeing some lions with Seb. Uh, we've had quite a number of amazing sightings together, mm. so I'm sure we'll be showing those along the way. But uh, yeah, as I say, we thought we'd check it out. So for those of you who weren't on drive this morning, uh, we did actually find, uh, I think it was Gwen, quite a low-ranking female, uh, and she's got two tiny, tiny cubs. Uh, we think possibly around three weeks, four weeks old, but uh, still very black, and from their behavior, it, they hadn't been coming out of the hole very much. There was a grey go away bird that went <laughs> and they, uh, they darted back in the hole. But there was uh, a few other birds like the Cape Turtle Dove singing. So I do think uh, they were actually ignoring it. So I do think they have been out, but apparently this is the first time they have been seen. They were unsure of the vehicle when we first pulled around to have a better view of them. Uh, so yeah, so quite exciting and this is what is wonderful about Safari Live because we are live from the African bush We have no idea what's about to happen. You are along for the ride and watch it unfold right in front of us It is just magic. So I hope you enjoy the drive this afternoon. So we've got the one female uh, Behind us so we, we were kind of thinking that maybe they'd all found some shelter out of the Sun, but uh, I think this looks to be possibly Gwen, 
but it is difficult to say. But she looked quite light compared to ribbon. And uh, I actually got a sketch of her right ear, but I'm sure you guys back home who have been on a few more drives might be able to ID her. But what I would like to do is try and see if I can pull around a bit further and see if we can get another view. But we're just worried that where she's where she is, there might be quite a few bushes as we go around. So we wanted to show her here first, just in case we can get another view of her. So we're going to try that now then and uh, see. Oh, she is looking over her shoulder actually, because Seb thought he could see another one, but she looked over her shoulder just then. Either that or maybe the pups were going to come down. No? Okay, so... <laughs> yeah, let, let's see if we can try. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm going to make you work out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, while we while we uh, try and change position, I think uh, it's probably a good idea to head back to Tristan and see how he's catching up with those animals that he's got around. The, I think it's the dam that they're at, especially the buffalo, which is brilliant news. <laughs> well, Tara, I am. I'm, I feel like I'm on a beach actually because the sun is shining. It's warm. It's pleasant. There's a bit of water around. And it's like watching the traffic on a beach on a holiday when there's people going up and down. And that's what it's like here. Yeah, there's just all these different characters that are moving around. Um, Monitor Lizard's doing its own thing. There's the Franklin pecking away near Monitor Lizard. There's the Impalas, the Nyala, the Buffalo are having a wallow. It seems as though everybody's just having a great old time. And then you've got the noisy neighbors, which are those guys right there. The Hardy Dars, they came landing in and shouting at everybody. And everyone kind of looked at them. And it's like that noisy crowd that arrives at the beach. And in between them is the terrapin and our blacksmith lapwing. I actually would love to know how many different species of animals we've got here. We've got, let's see, we've got a Nile monitor lizard, so that's one. We've got the Franklins, that's two. Impalas, Nyala, Hardidar, terrapins, blacksmith lapwing, buffalo, so that's already eight. I wonder if we can get to ten different species just at the waterhole itself. I would imagine that we could if we looked around. I'm sure there's a little three-banded plover lurking around here. I did hear a grey go-away bird earlier. Ah, and there's actually red-billed oxpeckers that were around too. So there's our ten animals at the waterhole. Now the buffalo is interesting because they and they've arrived really out of nowhere. And while I've been sitting here and thinking about these buffalo, I was, this morning when we were sitting with those lions, there was a lot of oxpecker noise. And I wonder if maybe the lions weren't following these buffalo tracks the whole night and towards this area. And that's why we saw them cutting through that drainage and we heard a lot of oxpeckers. I wouldn't have been surprised if maybe these buffalo weren't too far ahead of them. And it just got a bit warm and the lions decided to lie down and continue their journey this afternoon as they look off for these buffalo. But there was really a lot of oxpeckers making a lot of noise. And that is very synonymous with buffalo so it could have been that they came from that area i'm not sure which way they did come from but their tracks were around hyena central gari cut line so it is possible so john you say all these animals why don't the cats spend more time around the dams during the daytime well john the simple reason is that a lot of the time these waterhole areas don't have the most shade unless they're quite far off the water hole and this particular one is a little bit different because it has got quite a bit so that's one side of it the second side of it is that during the day cats are they hot they're not really looking to hunt extensively and so what you find often with cats is that they'll be lying not too far away from water and as the sun starts to set or it's just before it rises that's when you find them coming towards these water holes and then looking for these animals that are just, have been around that area for the day so that's why you'll sometimes see the cats close by but there are certain cats and if you go into places like the Kalahari where it's really very dry and there's not too much around the cats do sit at the water holes so there's lions that will sit at the water holes and as the animals come in they then hunt them here I suppose there's a lot more water so it spreads everything out and they can probably sit here some days for long periods of time and not see anything and it also depends on the specific animal something like a leopard is not going to be able to hunt too successfully at a place like this there's not enough cover for it close enough to the dam to have the animals come in and be able to drink also when animals come to water they are highly alert as to what's going on they know that often they're vulnerable when they're drinking and so when they come down they'll often take a long time to get to the water and they'll scan and they'll check and they'll look around and that makes it then a lot harder for the predators the predators like to be in places where it's a little bit dense and thicker that they're able to just wait and watch and then surprise animals that walk near them and we've seen in the mara they also they hunt a lot in the longer grass areas 
Oh, Senzo says he's seen something. Senzo, look at you. You've got eyes like a hawk. Because behind us is, well, it's not a very hard animal to see, but I wouldn't have definitely looked behind me at any time soon. But over there, we have some long-necked, very tall giraffe, which I haven't seen for some time now. So it really is busy around the Juma Dam this afternoon. It seems as though we could just sit here all afternoon and things will come our way. Now, I'm sure these giraffe eventually are going to end up down by the water. They're just going to slowly feed their way down. It's quite typical of giraffe to be feeding at this time and they get normally to water a little bit later in the day. And I hope that they do come this way because watching giraffe drink has got to be one of my favorite things. It is the most awkward stance that they have and it just looks so complicated and I feel sorry for them when I watch them drink I always think that this must be the worst punishment to make a giraffe drink and they have to get down and they bend their knees and their neck has to go down and they are very vulnerable when drinking so hopefully our giraffe can get down here before any predator or lion arrives here later this evening and causes too much of an issue but it's a female giraffe on the right the one on the left I'm not so sure just yet I can't see the ossicones from here there we go another female so two female giraffe which is quite cool there's also a third one a little bit further to the left which Senzo won't be able to see it's behind a bush so imagine that most of them are females but with giraffe there's no real structure to them so you won't have dominant male giraffe that will look after a herd in a harem and keep his females to himself like we see with the zebras you find with giraffe they have them probably the loosest social structure of all of our animals out here and what happens with them is that they'll just come in and out and join and mix and match and whether they be males females it doesn't really matter and I was reading in a book the other day about giraffe herds and they reckon that they did a study in parts of the Kruger National Park and the giraffe herds didn't stay the same for more than a 24 hour period so it just gives you an idea of just how much these guys move around within the population and how much they mix and match together. David you're wondering if one of the giraffes is pregnant. David to be thoroughly honest with you difficult to see from where I am I'm trying to look on the monitor but it's quite glary still at this stage of the day so I'm battling to see nicely and it is very far away it's I would say probably four or five hundred meters away but it is very possible giraffe will have their young ones at pretty much any time of the year they mostly coincide with the summer months but they will have their young ones at any time of the year and so it is highly possible that there is a pregnant giraffe there i'm just trying to see nicely the one in the middle there does look a bit pregnant doesn't it it's got a nice big swollen belly but i think there's a bit of heat haze that's also causing a bit of a movement on the belly but when you get a, I'll go a little bit closer just now once we've had a look at our waterhole and spent some time here and if these guys are not going to come closer then I'll go and have a better look and we'll be able to work out just if it is pregnant or not and there's another female that's just joined by the looks of it now those of you who are new and don't know how we sex these females and you wondering what ossicones are well ossicones are those structures on top of their head and it's basically like a horn structure it is a bit of bone that fuses to the skull after birth and so Sinak I think it was you are wondering what ossicones are and what they're for and so basically it's a piece of bone that fuses to the skull now in females it's pretty vestigial it doesn't really do too much you won't they won't use it to be able to fight off predators you know at the end of the day it's much easier to run away and to use those long legs to kick to keep predators at bay but males will use it extensively in their quest for mating so when they fight with one another and try to chase each other away they'll swing their necks with these big heavy ossicones and they can do a lot of damage with that it's not impossible for them to knock each other out or even to break ribs and all kinds of other things so they are quite powerful with those ossicones but in terms of sexing them the female very narrow very thin lots of hair on top and the male has got very thick very big horns that has no hair on top now a lot of people think that the ossicone goes bald on the top and it loses its hair it's actually not the case it's basically what happens is as that ossicone gets wider in its girth on top of the head so the skin splits basically and goes over the top and there's actually no skin on top of it it's almost like a bare patch on top and no hair then grows there so that's how it works and that's why the females tend to have hair and the males don't and it's nice for us to be able to sex them I was also reading a thing about using giraffe stomachs but I disproved that theory the other day because we were looking at a male giraffe that was very clearly a male giraffe and according to this book the stomach was that of a female so it's not an accurate way to do it the only other way to sex them via 
without looking at the osteocones is obviously to look between the legs which luckily for us we don't have to do because that feels like a bit of an awkward situation but it seems like our giraffe are very happily munching away and giraffe are probably the most finicky eaters out here Tara was talking yesterday about how Steenbok are quite finicky eaters but the giraffe are very similar to that as well they know that they are a large animal that they need a lot of nutrients to survive but their problem with them is that they don't have much space in their stomach so they've got massive lungs massive heart and a digestive tract that needs to then work very efficiently to give them enough nutrients to survive so they'll choose most of the most highly nutritious plants that they can get which in this area is pretty much the acacia species now I know acacia has changed its name and I always forget the name of it I know it starts with a V but I always forget what they called now they've changed but the acacia plants have perfect leaves they are highly nutritious and for a giraffe they're the best thing to have when they're looking for food so you'll find them often feeding off those and they feed off those tiny little leaflets and swallow them and then they'll regurgitate them later so they do spend a lot of time looking for the right environments and that's why we're lucky here in the sands is that we do have a quite a large population of acacias which allows us to support a large population of giraffe which is great now our buffalo seem to be moving off now which is quite strange what we want with these buffalo is actually to go southward so they're heading roughly in the right direction yes i'm talking to you three you need to go that way down towards gari cut line side and on towards vulture's nest because that will certainly bode well for our afternoon adventure and see if we can't get the inkumas chasing after them i'm pretty sure the inkumas are dreaming of buffalo right now as they sleep away the heat of the day this morning when i saw them they were looking a little on the skinny side so i'm sure they're looking for some food david you're wondering if the other animals feel safer with big buffalo around david i'm not sure i don't think they process things the same way that we do ultimately they i suppose they will feel safer in a way that it's more eyes and ears uh, to be able to detect predators but you must remember something like a monitor lizard a franklin um an impala and yala buffalo they all have different predators they there's things that are going to hunt franklins that are not going to hunt buffalo there's things that are going to hunt buffalo but very seldom hunt franklins like the lions so each one has got its own problem to worry about and so at a waterhole they've all got to be very careful but the more animals there are here the tends to be the easier it is to spot predators and therefore the safer they should be it's also a numbers game at the end of the day if you're one of 50 the chances of you being killed is far less likely than if you are one of one that's a water hole so i suppose there is some safety element in that but i don't think the animals consciously will go to areas where the buffalo are in order to keep themselves safe i think they just kind of happen upon the buffalo at a water hole and well they enjoy it and actually when you see big herds of buffalo coming down other than these kind of three bulls and when you get those herds of two three four hundred that come down to water holes like this everybody else clears out of the way because there's just a sort of stampeding mass of black buffalo that come down and they tend to push everybody else out the way and you'll find then that everything moves and goes to other places because the reason being is the buffalo will dirty the water they're going to wade through it they're going to make it muddy and it's really not going to be a great place to drink and a lot of the animals then just shift off to another water source which is quite interesting. Yvonne, you're wondering if there's a particular time of year the buffalo are born? No, Yvonne, they do get born all year round, but the height of the birthing season generally is again coinciding with those summer months, so the periods of higher rainfall. But you will see buffalo being born in winter months. Last year during the drought, there were one or two little babies that were born. And funny enough, the babies actually survived a lot better than the adults did. And the reason for that is probably due to the fact that they were getting a nutrient rich milk, or well, they were getting milk from the adult. While the adult was battling to find nutrients, Nutrients, the milk at least was still coming through and that little buffalo was able to at least get some so it was an interesting phenomenon uh, in around September October last year just after we had the really worst part about the drought and then a little bit of rain came and that flush of green was actually a death sentence for a lot of the buffalo but those younger individuals that had fed off the richer milk were able to actually use that grass and, and be able to eat the grass without having nearly as many problems as what big buffalo bulls like this would have had because their stomachs would have gotten used to this dry dead grass they wouldn't have been used to rich green moisture filled grass and that actually caused them to get diarrhea and they defecated a lot of diarrhea lost moisture dehydrated and that's what 
what actually led to a lot of the buffalo dying last year in the drought. So the younger buffalo were all around and you would go around and you'd find these sub-adult buffalo that were maybe a year, two years old and they were all doing fine and wandering around without a herd. It was really quite sad actually to watch because generally younger buffalo of that age would have not been on their own. They would have been in groupings and would have been with a herd that would have allowed them to stay much safer and I'm sure the lions had an absolute field day on some of them. Now our buffalo are disappearing slowly away from the dam but the impalas are now coming in again. Joey you're saying all these animals you wonder what the next animal is that I'll show you. Well Joey I hope that there will be another one that will just come down to the dam. I wouldn't mind just sitting here all afternoon. There's something peaceful about being at Gauri Dam and Every time we're about to move ourselves, another animal arrives. You can see impalas are now coming in. There's beautiful reflections of these impalas as they're drinking. And I think this is the stage is perfectly set for, well, I think Hosanna or Tumba would be my guess, to come wandering down and it would be really good to see one of the young boys here, I think. But I doubt that's going to happen because the Tumba is down near the Mulawati and Hosanna, funny enough, was with um, Tingana and Tandi this morning on Torchwood. Apparently he was watching them mate, so I don't know what's with the royal kids and why they are around those mating pair, but it's an interesting phenomenon. Now, while I think about that and wonder why they would do that, let's go back to Taro, who I think has done a little bit of bundu bashing, but has now got herself into a better position to view those spotted cutie little hyenas. Well, welcome back. Sounds like you had a lovely sighting. So we did try and uh, reposition ourselves to see the hyenas. It looks like Timber and Ribbon were there. They were tucked in uh, just behind a bush. But unfortunately, uh, they did move. Uh, but well, I think it was uh, Gwen that she actually did move and go into a slightly thicker bush uh, for a shade because it's getting quite hot out here. So she was snoozing. But uh, unfortunately, as I say, <laughs> she, just as we were going to try and, uh, I think, cross over, they decided, you know what, no, shade is better. Okay, we'll go. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, we we've thought we might as well leave them because they are flat and we're not really getting a nice view of them. But hopefully, maybe later on, as it cools off a little bit, they might come out. And you never know, the cubs might come out as well. So, we're heading down towards um, Central. We're on Buffalo's Hook Cut Line. I'm going to take Gary Cut Line to try and head towards where the lions were last seen this morning. And it is World Lion Day, so trying to bring awareness about the lions. Because unfortunately, uh, it's, it's such a charismatic creature and everyone thinks that the lion is actually okay uh, for numbers. It's very widely distributed. But unfortunately, it, there's quite a, a few issues in terms of genetics. There, becoming isolated into small pockets and if animals can't move between those pockets then the genes will that the gene pool will actually shrink and that can cause issues uh, makes the population more susceptible to disease and uh, all sorts of things like that so uh, certainly trying to bring awareness about uh, lion and lion populations I know they're doing great work trying to keep uh, the populations of lions as they're right up in the border between Botswana, uh, Zimbabwe and South Africa. There's a very important population of lions that actually move between the three countries in that, that area. Uh, to, and then they're very important for keeping the genetic variation between the populations. So I know they're doing very good work up there to try and keep that happening. Hey Carlos and welcome on board this afternoon. Hope you're enjoying the safari so far. Carlos uh, wanting to know how safe are we from the predators and they've actually they, they're used to seeing the vehicles and they're used to seeing people on the vehicles so this it, it becomes the norm for them especially because they most of them have been born exposed to the vehicles so it's something that they, it's just part of their life. So they don't really associate us as food. If we were to walk out and either lie down or sit down or whatever, and 
you know, sort of look quite meek and mild, then they might actually decide, you know what, you look quite good to eat. So that's why if ever we come across a predator on foot, uh, the golden rule is you do not run, because prey runs, and that triggers um, something, especially in the cats, that triggers something very basic, and it's like, oh, I must chase. If you think about your, your cat at home, and you move something, the cat is immediately involved, it's focused on what you're moving. But if that thing stays still for a while, they're like, ah, oh, whatever, <laughs> not interested. It's the same with the cat. So if you run, they're like, oh, <laughs> let's chase it, especially if they're hungry. So in the bush, the golden rule is you stand your ground and you try and make yourself look big and scary. So quite often there's a bit of swearing involved. I don't know why that makes you feel braver. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know sort of throwing your arms up to make yourself look taller and that that is the general way in the bush so you know if, if uh, an animal comes across a larger animal they try and make themselves look big if they are going to stand the ground so if you think about a cat coming across a dog uh, in a domestic environment the cat raises its back and raises its fur and spits and snarls even though the cat might be much smaller than the dog but it works because it stood its ground and the dog's going oh that, that's that's not normal I don't like the look of that so it's the same principle in the bush so I think um, yeah we're gonna take Gary Cudline I think Tristan's still with some animals uh, for you to catch up with so we'll hopefully have some animals of our own when uh, when you come back to us so enjoy We are, Tyra. We've now found our next species. It seems as though it's just a busy day around the dam itself. The zebras are just on the edge of the dam on the open area. There's a stallion and a few females walking around. And I was trying to check very carefully if it was potentially the same herd with our injured zebra from the other day. But I don't see any sign of an injured zebra here, so it could be a different grouping. The giraffe are just in the background as well. And I always have to giggle to myself when I see zebra and giraffe because here in South Africa, we have a band called zebra and giraffe. And I don't know why, it always just makes me chuckle when I think of is a band called Zebra and Giraffe, and the fact that when they are together, because they're not actually together that often, that it is quite funny. Now, our zebras, you can see, are moving slowly but surely away from the dam, so I would imagine that they've already had a drink, but as they move, I don't know if you can see that their heads bob quite extensively. So the reason why that is, is because unfortunately for a zebra, they get a parasite that gets into their nostril called a botfly, and that botfly causes irritation a plenty and so as they bob their head like that it just helps to ease that little larvae moving around inside there and stops them from getting too irritable and it helps to ease what's going on so it's a lot of it is that you can also see there's a bit of grooming and interaction that will go on zebra are probably some of the most sociable animals that we have out here so unlike the giraffe that don't form a strong bond here in South Africa our zebras tend to form a very strong bond the male is very protective of his females you can see he's the one last at the back here by the looks of it and he'll make sure that he defends all of his females and keeps his harem in check and they will groom each other and stand side by side to keep the flies away it's all very very tight knit unit now i'm going to quickly just shoot ahead because i want to just get them with the giraffe the giraffe are just where the zebra are walking well at least one giraffe is so i want to try and get them all together and see how it looks when we have them all lined up Now, I believe Tyler's... Tyler? Tyler? Why did I say Tyler? Taylor and Tyra are killing me at the moment. I'm sorry, Tyra. I do apologize, and I'm sorry, Taylor. But the two of you have just merged into one person, so let's go across to Tyler, who's got apparently a screaming baby elephant. <laughs> Thanks, Tristan. <laughs> but yes, we've got a... a quite a comical little bull elephant here chasing the impala and uh, he kind of did a, a bit of a trumpet just then and mum went is there something going on so she came down to investigate and then just just gone okay <laughs> you're just causing havoc <laughs> luckily for the impala but that is sometimes the problem actually when the little baby elephants are doing a little trumpet and th mum thinks oh something's going on Especially if you're the wrong side of that little elephant, then she thinks that you've done something. No, it wasn't me. So she's 
her, she's, I've just seen her temporal lobe just at the back of her eye is actually weeping slightly. So she's either a little bit stressed, maybe she's come across a predator, or she's in estrus. <laughs> I think that little bull's just chased the impala back again. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get another view of him. I'll see see if he doesn't come out. We'll see if we can try and move forward a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Cool. Just see, where did you go? Yeah, he's just behind the tree at the back. We might get another view of him if we just go down a little bit more. Oh, we get, get yeah, we can get a view of Mum. We can kind of see him. He's got his back to us at the moment. But, um, yeah, at least you might be able to see the temporal lobe I was just talking about. Now, in males, you do look for that as well to see if they are in must, because uh, that means that they could be slightly more aggressive than what they would be if they were not in must. But we're just wondering where the rest of the herd are, because it's just her and her baby. Now, she might be at the back of the herd, maybe. Could be the rest of the herd is somewhere around. Or it could be that she is on her own. I say elephants are very social creatures, but maybe sometimes they just prefer a little bit of time to themselves. Now, she is using her feet to try and kick some of the vegetation up. They will also dig up roots as well. Occasionally you might see them actually using their tusks and it is thought that they actually favour one tusk over the other for either digging or breaking branches over it and sometimes you can actually see that wear, wear down so you might get one tusk shorter than the other. using that very powerful trunk to try and locate anything of interest. Now, obviously, if you have a look clearly, their eyes are very small. So their eyesight's not brilliant. They will be good for close-up stuff, but from here, um, we're probably going to be blurred to her. So their, their nose kind of makes up for that because they've got an incredibly strong sense of smell. They're actually much better than a dog. So I, I forget what, the, uh, what it is now. It's something like eight times better than a bloodhound or something. It's just incredibly good. So if she can just sniff out any morsel of food that is attractive to her. And they can just pick out one blade of grass with the tip of the trunk or knock over a tree or use the trunk to shake the tree so fruits drop out. It really is quite amazing what they can get their trunk around. Ah, I've just heard a few more branches breaking. <laughs> so just across the way from where she is, I think that's where the rest of the herd must be. There you go, you can see her using her foot there again. Hi, Cenac. Cenac wanting to know when does a female start coming into estrus? And it can be as early as 12 years old, can be usually sort of more average around the 14, 15 year old mark. And when it's her first mating, the females will often support her through that. So it's got to be quite intimidating uh, for a, a, quite a large bull sometimes to, uh, to mate with quite a small elephant. So they will often almost hold a hand through it. But that's what I always find quite amazing is the similarities between elephants and humans. I mean, they stay, the females stay with their uh, female relatives. And as I say, they come into estrus roughly around the 15, 16, uh, 14, 15, year old, which is about the same as a human going through puberty, 
and the males also about 16, 18, they start moving away from the family group. But certainly it's a lot more complicated than what we really gave elephants credit for. And you can start seeing the large herds of relatives and distant relatives all coming together and then they break away again, usually during the summertime when there's more food available. <laughs> uh, that little bull's found something tasty at the back there. Snazzy! She's a beautiful Ellie. Yes, she is indeed. Now you can see her flapping her ears every so often. That's not aggression. That is her trying to keep cool. So it can take about 20 minutes to cycle all the blood in her body through those ears, but by flapping those ears, she can actually reduce the temperature by about three degrees. Now that can mean quite a lot. It doesn't sound it, but it is quite a drop in temperature. So by flapping the ears, obviously it allows the air to flow over them and helps to just remove the heat from the veins that come very close to the surface of the skin. Here comes the little bull out, just popping out from behind the bush, behind his mum. So from the largest land mammal to the tallest land mammal. <laughs> well indeed, Tara, we have our tallest one stretching, trying to get as much nutrients as it can from the top of this tree. It's actually even breaking the branches so that it can feed more comfortably. You'll find with female giraffe, it's a weird thing, but they tend to not mind feeding lower than their head level, so they often will feed low down and bend their necks and break branches to feed at a more comfortable level, whereas the males are quite comfortable lifting their heads and reaching for food. It's a strange phenomenon, but it does happen quite regularly. And I always love the way that they feed. Look how they curl their lips back and that long tongue comes out and they pull off little leaflets as they go, and you can actually even see the saliva as they're pulling off those leaflets. It's quite incredible. Now that particular tree, as you can see, has got small little spines, so it would still hurt if one of us had to go and grab at that branch the way that this giraffe is doing. But this giraffe has those very thick rubbery tongue that it's able to wrap around and those hardened lips which are covered with small little bumps. And those bumps lack blood vessels and pain receptors or nerve endings, and so they don't actually feel pain or bleed anyway, and that's how they're able to feed off a lot of these big thorn trees and be able to digest the food that they get off them. So it's pretty incredible to watch. So there we go, you see what I was saying about them bending over. You'll find the males very seldom bend as far as that to be able to feed. They like to feed a lot more upright than what the females do. But it's quite something to be right next to a giraffe like this and just be kind of towered over by them. You forget just how big they are until you're really close to a giraffe and it sort of looks down upon you. It's a strange thing to see something so high up in the air and the way that they move around is just phenomenally interesting. Asnam, I think I got it right. I hope I did. You're a new viewer, so welcome to Safari Live. I hope that you're enjoying the experience so far. And you want to know whether male giraffe are bigger than females. Well, yes, they are. So a male giraffe, when he's fully grown, will stand about a meter taller than a female giraffe. So he stands at about five and a half meters tall, whereas a female giraffe will be at about four and a half meters tall. Now, that in feet, I'm not quite sure because my maths is not very good. So if you are from that side of the world that needs feet, well, we'll have to try and get a Google calculator out maybe Alice can help me quickly and tell me exactly how many feet five and a half meters is but I'd imagine it's just over it's about 20 odd somewhere around there now a giraffe has just left that tree and the reason why it would have left that tree this is also an interesting part about trees is that trees are able to respond to the way they are being fed upon so we would imagine there goes our giraffe over the top and we would imagine that trees are not able to work out what they're doing or 
and will be able to defend themselves. But in the case of giraffes and varying other animals that eat them, what trees will do is produce tannins. Now, tannins make the leaves bitter, and it makes it very uncomfortable for the giraffe to actually eat those. And so after a while, the leaves don't taste very good, and that's when the giraffe will leave that tree alone and go on to the next one. Now, the acacia species that we were talking about earlier, they actually can release a pheromone that is passed on by wind, and they can warn the other trees downwind of them as to what's going on and to be able to then protect themselves. So when these giraffe come along, the trees are already producing those tannins, already a little bit bitter, and so they don't actually get fed on heavily. And that's why you see them moving quite a lot while they feed, which is really cool. Now, unfortunately, our giraffe has hidden itself away. I'm going to carry on because we are getting absolutely baked by the sun where we are sitting now. So I'm going to start moving around a little bit. We'll come back to this area a bit later in the afternoon and see if anything else has turned up around the dam. I think we've had an absolutely phenomenal sort of last 45 minutes checking out the area around Gauri Dam. There's been zebras and giraffe and buffalo and impalas and nyalas and monitors and birds and well it's all been happening so it's been a wonderful display actually. We've had mammals, we've had birds and we've had reptiles. What are we missing? Amphibians. We're missing amphibians. It would be nice to find a little frog don't you think? I think a frog would have been a perfect sort of combination for all of that. We'll have to wait until the summer months though unfortunately for our froggies. We're not going to see too many now and I'm really looking forward to the frogs coming back. I know Taylor is too. Taylor and I both love frogs and we love to do frogging and go out at night and when you hear all their calls and go and look for all the different ones and it was super cool that this year Taylor got to see some frog species that she's never seen which was very exciting so I was happy for her when she saw her golden leaf folding frog and banded rubber frog. So, Karen, you say three stories is 30 feet. So there we go, somewhere close to that. I was going to go with 27. That was what I was originally going to go with, because for some reason 27 was in my mind. But I don't know. Like I say, maths was not my strong point, as my parents will attest, and neither was it my brother's strong point. So we're obviously not a mathematical family, not like our geniuses in the tech departments, Connor and Alex and Peter. They're all the mathematicians amongst us. So we'll leave all of that to them. Senzo, were you good at maths at school? Yeah. You were? Well, that's not surprising, Senzo. You're a very sharp lad, and I'm not surprised at all that he was good at maths. You're lucky, Senzo. Some of us are not gifted with the maths gene, unfortunately. But it is a beautiful day, I can tell you that much. And what is quite nice is seeing all the flowering knob thorns because in my heart I know that summer is coming and I'm a summer boy through and through. I don't really like the winter too much. It's dry, it's dusty, it's cold. And that's not how I like to be. I like it when it's warm and when there's lots of things going on. And so when I see the knob thorns flowering, I'm already getting excited because I know that after the knob thorns, we're going to start to see little changes everywhere. Temperatures are getting warmer, days are getting longer. and then we get an absolute explosion of insects and animals and birds and well it just becomes really nice to be out here so I'm really hoping for all of that and can't wait for it to come. Unfortunately though I think the way things are going it might mean that I might be up in Kenya when all of that happens here and well Kenya will be going the opposite way so it will be going into its dry season which so I'm being punished with an eternal winter if that's what you can call it, although being sent to Kenya is not a punishment by any stretch of the imagination at all. It is one of the most beautiful countries. Senzo, did you have fun there? Because I haven't had a chance to really spend much time with Senzo. Yeah, I did. You did? Yeah. Senzo's got this little smile on his face, like he had a lot of fun. He's saying it as though he didn't have that much fun, but I feel like he's having a lot of fun in, in Kenya. He was telling me, though, that the balloon in Kenya was the most amazing thing that he's ever done, so I'm very, very jealous of him up in the balloon. I'm sure he had a wonderful time, and, well, he brought us some incredible images from there, so thank you, Senzo, for that. And it's been so nice to have the Mara, and I, I know this afternoon they're busy with their rehearsals as they prep for their next TV show this weekend, and we have to wish them good luck for their rehearsals and their and their TV show. I'm sure they're going to bring the house down. Last week was an absolute bumper episode with all kinds of rarities that, well, I'm jealous that they got to see. Servals and wild cats and those five cheetah brothers are just something else, aren't they? So it's going to be a real special treat to go up into that part of the world and I think every part of the crew is all looking forward to spending time up there. The ones that have been in Juma and I know a lot of them in Mara are looking forward to getting back to Juma. So it's going to be nice to have the two teams running and moving around and having a lot of mixing up. It certainly is a wildlife spectacle when both are in operation. So 
It's been a great addition to our whole Safari Live experience, and I hope a lot of you have enjoyed it too. In fact, I hope all of you have enjoyed it. Now, I'm just going slowly southwards on Tundams because I want to go past Chelapan, and then not that there's any water at Chelapan, which would mean that's why the buffalo aren't really here. They used to like Chelapan because it's a nice place to wallow. But what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to then head towards Twin Dams because Twin Dams, well, that does have water. And so if you're a thirsty leopard in this afternoon, then you're going to probably want to have a little drink. I know if I was a leopard, I would want to have a little drink of water. And so Twin Dams must be the closest point to where Tumba was this morning. So I'm going to go and check there and see. Hopefully he's lounging about on his termite mound like he was doing a few afternoons ago. Or if not, just in the shade around that area. Now, what are these tracks here? No, those are not tracks that we need to worry about. Actually, those tracks are quite cool. So these are tracks for a certain individual animal, which I'm going to show you now. Senzo, can you show those ones over there, please? Because this is quite cool. Because it's not something we see every day. I'm just going to jump out quickly. Now, if we have a look here, I'm just going to circle where I'm pointing. So it's all of that there. We have very long elongated fingers and then we've got a little opposable thumb coming off here. So these are tracks for a baboon. Now the front foot is this one over here. It's got the long toes going forward and then you've got, you see, a B shape like that that tells you baboon. If it was a vervet, it would come down and make a V for vervet. So on the front foot, baboon and then this is the long back pad over here but there is something else in this track that you don't often see with baboons because remember baboons don't have a similar tail structure to what the vervet monkeys do but you see that there is a long elongated line here now that is from the tail of a baboon so what would have happened is this baboon probably sat there and the tail went down and that's how we've been able to see the tail you don't generally see it in baboon tracks because like I say their tail is held up high and doesn't touch the ground not like a vervet that tail comes this way so nice to see in a track and not a track that we'll see very often at all. The problem is, is if baboons have been here, in all likelihood they have headed down towards Twin Dams. Now I'm just sorting out my mic pack that it doesn't fall out the car. And it means that if they've gone down to Twin Dams, the chances of there being a leopard sitting there is probably not very good because the baboons won't tolerate a leopard at a dam. They're not going to be very happy if there's a spotted cat sitting there. And especially a young leopard like Tumba will easily be dominated by a big troop of baboons. Now I have to make sure that I plug myself in because I have this nasty habit of getting out the car and forgetting. Karin, you say that's a great track? Well, thank you, Karin. I think so too. It's not one I've seen in a long time with baboons. Generally, the baboons tend to have their, like I say, their tails up. So I was quite happy to actually see that. And the thing about baboons is, the problem with them is, especially early in the morning, if there's been baboons walking somewhere, is they get your hopes up quite a bit because you're like, see these tracks and they look very poor like and there's this kind of shape on the road and you think lions all of a sudden or leopard and then it turns out to be a baboon so they kind of trick you a little bit with that but always nice to see the opposable thumbs and to be able to show you the difference between them and vervet monkeys and how we know the tracks even on a baby baboon you can see very clearly that it's a baboon rather than a monkey So, Justin, you want to know if a baboon can wag its tail. Well, Justin, if you give it a treat, then it does wag its tail. It will sometimes even sit and wag its tail for you if you hold the treat nicely. No, I'm just joking, Justin. They don't actually wag their tails at all. Their tails are pretty flimsy and don't really do much, actually. They help balance a little bit when they're climbing, but it doesn't actually move much like a vervet monkey's tail. You see the vervet monkey tail moving quite a bit and going in different directions to help balance, but with the baboons, not at all. Their tail just tends to hang down. And there's another species for the afternoon. I wonder how many species we're on now. But there goes some kudu, a rather young kudu male that's actually moving away at the moment. There he is at the back, and then the females and young ones. And I wonder if this is not our same grouping of kudus we had yesterday, because where we had them yesterday was Nyala Road South. Now, I'm not very far from there, actually, so I wouldn't be surprised if it is the same group that I had yesterday. And you can see a bit of grooming going on, keeping that fluffy tail all nice and clean and not matted in any way so that when it has to show its fluffy white tail that everybody can see it well done boy 
we've done a good job you can also see his beard is starting to grow so he's doing his best line impersonation for today he's getting his mane going down his throat and on his back and you're looking very pretty yes we're talking about you what are you listening to I don't see anything and the other kudu are not in any way watching or listening to anything so I don't think we have anything to worry about it's always good to watch animals when they start to listen in a direction or look very hard in a certain place it's worth just double checking because you never know what could be there sometimes it might be a leopard or a lion that's hiding and it's sitting crouched and even though the kudu haven't seen it they know something's afoot and they'll stare in that direction so it's always worth as a person making sure that you have a look and check now I'm going to sit and enjoy my kudus and slowly meander my way down to Twin Dams and while I do that I believe Tara that has something that might make these kudus very nervous should they move in this direction Yep, no Matata, pull in. Welcome back everybody. We've just found the big cats. Amazing. <laughs> so uh, definitely uh, not moved too far from all accounts from this morning. Looks like they are out for the count, but it is World Lion Day today, so I was just saying you don't usually have the animal whose day it is <laughs> on uh, Safari Live. <laughs> the animals always seem to know and they seem to just disappear on that day, so absolutely fantastic. And a thanks very much to Tristan because he actually found them this morning. He'd been tracking them uh, yesterday only to find that they'd gone on to Torchwood, but this morning they made it back this side for us. So uh, definitely well done to Tristan and his tracking skills. Now I was just uh, saying to Seb, has he seen the clip of the mouse running into the Unkahuma female? <laughs> and then I said, oh, I'll save it for when we're live. So have you seen it? Um, <laughs> the mouse running into it? So we had the Unkahuma pride yeah. on the road and one of the females was sleeping and literally out of the bush a mouse runs straight into her oh, wow. <laughs> she jumps up not knowing what on earth's gone on and the mouse obviously backtracks very quickly but she then glared at us thinking that we'd thrown something at her <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah classic. yeah you'll have to check it out so yes. it is amazing for sure, for sure. <laughs> so funny and they, it was literally just like this they were all just passed out first thing in the morning and like we say cats might be flat but something can happen and to be fair I hadn't thought that could happen <laughs> but it did just prove the point anything is possible in the bush now we've got uh, a few flies around this afternoon I've been battling with them a little bit and it looks like this female's battling with them and I think this is the female I think um, Seb saw that she's got the whole I think Tristan saw this morning, uh, it could be she got on the wrong side of a horn. So that could be why maybe the flies are bothering her a little bit more than maybe the other lions. But if she gets irritated enough, she might just get up and move. <laughs> and of course those whiskers are sensory organs <laughs> nice one Derek lions having a lion on lion day <laughs> couldn't have phrased it better myself but obviously those whiskers very important for letting the cat know where it can and can't put its head just like your cat at home they're usually about the same length as the width of their body so if they've got the whiskers somewhere and they're touching, the chances are it's not going to be able to fit. Although I think domestic cats don't always listen to that advice from the whiskers. Yep, 
Yeah, lots of ears twitching and lots of tails twitching. So I believe you guys have caught up with a buffalo at the dam and I think Tristan's right, I think they are possibly following the buffalo. So as the sun sets, these cats might start hunting this evening because their bellies don't look full. Looks like they could do with a meal. But obviously conserving their energy is the best action at this stage. So they're not hungry enough to go hunting during the, the hot temperatures of the day. And Ariel, good afternoon to you. Also wanting to know how often they do hunt. So if they hunt a buffalo, pride this size, it might last a couple of days maybe. There's quite a few mouths there. And then they will literally gorge themselves and have huge bellies that you look like you want to take a pin to them and pop like a balloon. And they will digest that for another few days and then they'll start hunting again. So they have to take in on average, it will be about seven kilos of meat a day for an adult lion. But as I say, they can take it all in one sitting and it will digest over the course of a few days. So as I say, it will average out to about seven kilos. That's usually for quite a big male. Probably for a female, you're looking maybe about five, four or five kilos. And apparently a male could take in 40 kilos in one sitting. That's quite, quite a feat. 40 kilos of meat. But that is a big male lion. Hi Brian. Brian wanting to know how many hours a day a lion can sleep. When they full and there's no reason to move, they could sleep up to 22 hours a day because they just busy digesting that food. But if they hungry and they haven't eaten for a while, then they might be a lot more active. Especially if they're very hungry, then they they probably more likely to go out and about searching for food, creating opportunities to feed. So they won't be sleeping for as long. Kate, welcome on board. Kate's wanting to know if uh, if the animals become habituated to the vehicles, will that not make them more susceptible to hunting? Now, hunting herbivores, because if it's the hunting of herbivores, uh, hunting by people, okay. Copy that. So hunting by people. Um, so there are reserves in South Africa where hunting is not allowed at all and this is one of them. So the animals here have no fear uh, of people actually getting a permit and shooting them. Um, but there are other reserves where uh, animals will be hunted and they will learn very quickly to um, avoid the vehicles. Now what was really amazing is uh, in my old reserve we actually had to dart the lions and the lionesses there were super intelligent. I mean I've never seen lions so intelligent and the one female watched everything and they learnt that the vet would use a particular vehicle so they would learn to run away from that particular vehicle. The, the game viewers, that's fine, but this one particular vehicle they ran away from. So we thought, okay, well, we'll outwit them. So we took the vet uh, in a different vehicle. 
and uh, they were sat with us in the game vehicle, all nice and relaxed. We'd watch them throughout the night so we knew where they were in the morning so the vet could get, get to the right lion or lioness. And literally, as this vehicle pulled up, the one female looked at the person and realised it was the vet. I'm sure she did because she looked behind her, looked at the vehicle again and ran off. And the other, the other females were kind of looking at her going, well, what's wrong? Well, what's the story? <laughs> but they ran after her because she scarpered. So, uh, yes, they, they do know what's going on. And they, I think he, I think he had his um, dart gun at the ready, and I think it was that stance that she uh, she had clocked. So yes, very intelligent. So needless to say, the vet didn't get her that day. <laughs> This is absolutely fantastic. Chilling with African lions this afternoon. And there's a number of cubs, different ages. I think there's a month or so separating them. And I think, did I hear right, they're about eight months old, nine months old? Yeah, mm -hmm. nine years, nine months. Yeah. So they will be eating meat now. They would be fully weaned. Hi, Jackie. Jackie asking how long will they stay together? And with the females, they'll generally stay together throughout their life. Unless the pride gets too big, then you, you tend to get the pride splitting up and uh, going separate ways. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and the whole reason why the lions actually live as a, a family is to actually pull down large prey so they're able to tackle the buffalo and the giraffe and large animals like that. So obviously the more mouths to feed is the downside but there are more bodies to try and catch the larger prey. And what's really interesting is other cats that are generally solitary, like tigers and leopards, in some areas they're, they're, being, they're seen to be working together. So in Rathambone Park in India, they've actually started seeing them hunting the water buffalo, which is really quite interesting because, as I say, tigers uh, are generally solitary cats. And there's even been possibility of the leopards in the Sabi Sands actually cooperating as well. I know there was a talk of expanded pride theory in leopards uh, a few years ago because uh, actually as myself and Seb were just talking as we were driving down to relocate the lines about uh, seeing uh, five and six leopards all on one kill. Um, I was never lucky enough to find them on the kill but we actually shared a sighting that uh, we actually published as a paper about uh, the leopard male interacting with his three-year-old son and one-year-old cubs, and that was Karula's offspring. So there could be something to that, and that's to make use of the larger prey. There you go, she's getting a little bit irritated with the flies. There you go, you can see she doesn't have a big belly on her. so. I think Tristan's right. I think they might go hunting tonight. <laughs> what a shame. Hi, Yvonne. Welcome on board. Asking if the other lions will actually help look after the injured lioness if she's not able to hunt for herself. And she will, she, you know, she doesn't get involved in the hunt if she hangs back. She may have to wait uh, for the, um, sorry, I thought someone was calling me then to, to come into the lion sighting. But um, yeah, she might have to wait 
for the others to actually feed before she's allowed to feed. But they're quite robust animals as well. I mean, I haven't actually seen the wound, but it could be that um, it is just superficial and it should actually heal fairly cleanly and rapidly. But animals are, it's amazing. They can sometimes get beaten up uh, quite badly and they are able to, to actually survive those injuries. And especially living as a pride, again, she is going to be uh, helped out with that. You know, so it's not like she's a solitary cat and she, if she's injured, then she could um, reduce the, or she, she, she could lose the ability to actually hunt for herself. But say so she can lean on the others for food. Hi, is it gunshot? Hopefully I've got that right. Oh, okay. Oh, dumb, dumb shark. Sorry, dumb shark. <laughs> Getting the name wrong there. Asking uh, what lions do for fun. And they play, don't they? And yeah, you do get the cubs playing. And play is really important, especially at a young age for any animal because they it, it allows them to build their muscles uh, hone their skills so pouncing on each other um, sort of testing testing the, the waters if you like of what they can and can't do and they will carry that through and occasionally you do see the females uh, playing with the cubs as well and uh, I've even seen the cubs playing with males So sometimes, especially some of the younger females might get that little play bug for a few minutes and try and pounce on the other one. But generally speaking, the older females are past it and, you know, <laughs> quite happy for the kids to play. I'm just trying to remember, I think I have seen them biting each other's tails occasionally. If there's a tail that's being flicked, <laughs> I've seen one, let's say, sort of trying to bite it every so often. I think they do have a slight sense of humour. Ooh, so we go from the tawny cats to a spotty cat. This is an amazing afternoon. <laughs> well, happy Thursday, everybody. It's a cat galore at the moment, and so there's little Tumba slowly creeping along. He looks like he's maybe spotted something, and he's moving closer towards the road, which is great. I don't know if we're going to be able to keep him for that long, because it goes into a bit of a dip here, and then from there it's going to be quite tough. But I'm hoping he's coming up towards Twin Dams. We're just on the eastern side of the Mulawati, and he's looked like he's been walking up and down. So we found his tracks, and we followed them along and found him sitting on the southern side of the road. So he's slowly creeping north in direction, which is very good. But look at him. Isn't he the most beautiful cat? Now, my day is completely complete. I have had everything that I could have asked for today. I've had elephants, I've had lions, and now one of my favorite leopards in the whole world, Tumba. So it is a good day today, that is for sure. And I'm super glad that we found him. Hello, boy. And look at those beautiful eyes and that little pink nose. Very typical of this individual. He's such a good-looking leopard. Now, the problem is that with him being on these kind of areas is that there's quite busy, which is not great for a young leopard. I'm sure he doesn't really like all the attention of the cars. So hopefully he'll cross over onto our side and we'll be able to then see him a little bit better and in a quieter space. But I know a lot of you are very happy to see him and all saying hello. So I'm sure if he could speak, he would say hello back. It's great that he's at least come and shown himself. Now there's a vehicle that is here 
So Senzo, I'm going to ask you if you can just quickly keep an eye on him while I move out the way because it's a private car that wants to get past. So hopefully he won't move. At least Senzo knows where he is. I can't see him very well with the naked eye, but I'm just going to pull off for this car so that they are able to get past me. Let them go. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around, Senzo. It's going to make life a little bit easier because he's heading in that direction. So... Here we go. Okay, Senzo. You're going to have to try and spot him again, which is going to be interesting, to say the least. As you can see, a little bit of a car pile up at this stage, which is what I expected for this part of the world. Uh, there he is. Senzo, can you see him still? Okay, there we go. So, at least he hasn't moved. If he had moved, it would have been quite tough for us, but he's stayed in exactly the same spot. And actually, I think we might have a better angle on him now. Ariel, who's a new viewer from our Nat Geo shows. Hello, Ariel, and welcome to our Safari Live experience from South Africa. And you are joining us on a perfect day because we've got all of our cats out and about. And you say leopards are your favorite. Well, Ariel, I think you'll find that most of the Safari Live crew I have a soft spot for the leopards, and I know they are my absolute favorite animal, and I could spend all of my time with them. So any day with a leopard is a good day. I agree with you, and I'm also very excited to be seeing him. So it's definitely improved my mood somewhat and I think we've had an absolutely incredible afternoon if you think we've the amount of species we've seen this afternoon just goes to show you that sometimes luck can be on your side and there are so many things to actually see out here that we get so focused on one or two animals that in the end we can still see a lot now typical of a leopard he's gone into the shadows and into the thicker denser areas and a young leopard will do this because he's a little nervous of the cars that are here now some of the cars are going to move off and it will be a lot more quiet and i would hope then that he's going to start to come out and if he comes out onto the top bank here we're going to have be in the perfect place to see him but you can see that typical tail that gives a leopard away often that white tip that just curls up and that's one of their downfalls for us as a guide it's one of the first things you can spot when a leopard is walking around is that little white tail so he's very camouflaged as you can see there besides the tail sticking out so i don't know if this is jamie from kenya or if this is jamie jamie but jamie wants to know if i tracked tumbo if i stumbled upon him well jamie it was a bit of both because it was a bit of both because what happened was we found tracks in the Mulawati and the tracks went towards Twin Dams and came back again. So I was following the tracks along and I walked up and there were two vehicles and they looked at me and they were like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm tracking a leopard. And they said, well, the leopard is sitting right next to us. And so I then quickly went and got my car and now was able to find um, Tumba sitting here with these two cars. So I didn't know that he was here. We were actually just following his track. So it's a bit of both though. We, we can't claim it as a full-on tracking experience because others had already found him and he was south of the boundary. So I would have had to stop on the road here and would have been difficult to have followed the tracks any further. So the fact that they spotted him has helped. Now he has gone into a little thicket, but he is moving up towards us. And so I would assume that we're going to lose visual of him for a little bit. And then hopefully he's going to come back up and head back towards Twin Dams. The amount of tracks that are here for him is incredible. They're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so I'm sure he's going to maybe head towards Twin Dam for a drink. If not towards Twin Dam, there are some impalas just down the road here that he might be listening to. And that's maybe where he's heading. Is he coming our way, Senzo? Can you see him? So Senzo says he can see him and he's coming slowly, which is fantastic news. So hopefully he's going to move up and out. And so while we sit and wait for him and we're going to be patient and hope that he does come out, let's go back to Tara and the beautiful Inkuhuma Bride. Oh, amazing. You got to see Timber again. And I can't get over the size of that boy's paws. He is going to be huge. Now I think, um, yeah, Tristan was actually mentioning uh, that he was watching Tingana and, sorry, Tamba, not Temba. <laughs> oh, so many names for me to remember. <laughs> but uh, he was actually watching Tingana and uh, Tandy 
mating. And funnily enough, we've had the same situation with Induna and Karula and Yambili Ordan. Induna was actually in the, in the same area. I remember Mark actually found them. So after they mated outside of my window, he found them. That was amazing in itself. But uh, he actually found them uh, in the drainage line, I think, the next day. And Induna was around in the same area. So it is, it's, it's really unusual. And I've been kind of thinking of why they might be tolerated. And I do wonder if Induna, because he'd, he'd spent time with Yambili, that it was almost accepted that they were related, so he wasn't a threat. Because generally speaking, if you have, uh, if you have animals that share genes, if they're related, then there's no reason to fight because the same genes are going to get passed on. So it could be that that's why he wasn't seen as a threat. And I'm wondering uh, if it's the same story with uh, Tamba. But um, I need to find I need to find out who his father is supposed to be. That would be an interesting one. So if Tingana is his father or not. But I'm sure you guys at home can help me with that. So I think we're going to head back to Tristan. Uh, he might have had another sighting of the leopard again. Um, so fingers crossed and then uh, hopefully I'll get some information about his father. So enjoy. <laughs> well, Tara, as far as we know, we think that Tingana is the father of Hosanna and the leopard that is now popped up onto the tree to show us his massive paws that he has. So little Tamba has now come out beautifully, He's sitting just next to the road on a stump and is watching around and look at the size of those feet. Are they not absolutely huge? He really does have big feet for his age. It's amazing to see the size of his tracks. Look at that. They are monstrous. I'm pretty sure he's going to be a huge individual in later in life. It's going to be great to see when he gets older. I hope that he ends up in a place that we can see him because it'll be great if he does. He's an absolutely massive, I reckon, when he gets older, if he does grow into those feet. And so obliging of him to come and sit where he is sitting now. It's the perfect place for a leopard to be sitting nicely out in the open. So a little bit of patience was rewarded. Mike, you nice spot pattern, but as they get older, so that spot pattern evens out and it starts to almost set for their adulthood, and so much easier when they get a little bit older. Also, as they get older, they'll get nicks out of their ears, scars on their faces, and prominent markings that we'll be able to use to identify them. So, I mean, a male cub of a year old is going, this is pretty much how he's going to look for the rest of his life in terms of his spot pattern, but, you know, when he was a three, four, five week old cub, it would have been very difficult to get any sort of IDing features other than maybe the, the spots just above his whisker line that you could have used but it's much easier when they do get older they also take on a certain shape and a certain look about them and it's interesting because I know a lot of you use spot patterns when you ID leopards but when we here see leopards it's almost in instantly that you see them you can recognize certain individuals so for me Tamba, Hosanna, Shongile there's just a look about them I don't actually have to count their spots generally to know who they are so it's one of those things, it's almost like when if, you've got, if you've ever had pets and you've had dogs and cats, you know which ones are yours just by looking at them, and it's a similar kind of thing with the leopards. But isn't that beautiful? I wonder if he's seen something that he's just watching. Look, he's just putting his head over now. What have you seen, boy? And they are, like I said, were some impalas not too far away, so I wonder if he's not just watching those, and he's using the stump perfectly to be able to hide. It's very cool. You clever boy. I can tell you though, we know that he hasn't been with Tandi for the last two days, possibly three, but he still looks fantastic. He looks as though he's still managing to find food, and so whatever he is eating, he's doing perfectly well. He's not in any way losing condition. He looks healthy, his stomach looks quite round, so he's maybe, if he's feeding off birds and things like that, he's certainly successful in doing it. The other thing he could be targeting is terrapins and monitor lizards as we know Shongile and Hosanna did when they first were left on their own for long periods and so maybe he started to learn how to do that because there's no way that Tandi has been back to him in the last two days the fact that she's been mating with Tingana we know that they were on the western side and into Arethusa yesterday and then today they ended up 
Was there a little Franklin there? Yes, there are Franklins that are walking below his feet. Oh. <laughs> now, we saw him the other day growl at Franklins when they walked past him. I wonder if he's going to do the same with these Franklins. Franklins, you are playing with your life. I was saying that they will readily eat birds. Now, one leopard that did go after birds quite a lot was Shivambalana. So, for those of you that remember Shivambalana, and where he got his name was actually from catching a emerald spotted wood dove because that's what Shivambalana means and he was sitting on a mound and a wood dove came flying past and he just grabbed it and jumped up and grabbed it and so young leopards will feed on birds a lot. I think Tom is a little bit confused by the brazen nature of Franklin's because like I said the other day he just started growling at them when he was trying to sort of sit behind the log and watch them and now he looks as though he's thoroughly perplexed at the fact that these Franklin's are just playing around at his feet and are not really too scared of him and running away. So there we go, there's the little crested Franklin underneath. You are a brave Franklin, I can tell you right now. You're lucky that that's not Tundi because you would be dead by now. So Tundi is a lot more lethal <laughs> when it comes to hunting than what Tumba is at this stage of the game. What are you going to do? Hopefully he doesn't go pouncing after them because we might then lose visual of him. Where he is now is absolutely perfect for us to be able to see him in great detail and be able to watch him nicely and if he goes bounding after those franklins he might go back into that horrible thicket that we, he was in just now so i'm hoping that the franklins move away and we don't have to worry pygmy puff army you say so majestic well it doesn't get much better than that does it a leopard sprawled out on a fallen over tree is about as good as anyone could wish for. Now if he just turns his head and rests his head on his paw and stares at us, we will have the perfect leopard sighting. So that's what I'm going to hope for. I'm sure he will eventually. He'll lose interest in those Franklins if the Franklins move off. And then he's going to look around and being a young leopard, he often likes to look at people and varying other things. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see him turn his head towards us. So it's going to be, hopefully, a nice long sighting with our little tumba. Like I said, my day is absolutely made. I've had the most wonderful bush day, I think. It doesn't get much better than what I've had today. Oh, there he goes. You see, he's now looking at those Franklins. I think the Franklins are right below him now. I wonder if he's going to jump on them and pounce on them. He looks like he's getting ready. Look, he's positioning himself. Are you going to go? Oh, I wonder if he's going to pounce on them. Looks like he's getting ready. You can see his little bum is wiggling. I can't see his tail. Now, a tail of a leopard is normally their most expressive part. And just before they bounce, you see the tail twitching. Which, there it is. You can see the tail just coming up between the grass there. <laughs> I love a leopard's tail. The way it twitches is the best thing in the world. Don't go back down, though. The Franklins needed to walk the other way. I think it would have been much better had they... Why is he going to go after them? Our oh, beard, you say volunteer cat toys. Well, yes, I don't know if it's volunteer or Darwin Awards today, but it is most certainly not the brightest Franklins out here because they're moving straight towards our little leopard, and he's going to pounce on one of them if they're not careful. You can see he's moving away slightly now. But his little belly, I was looking through the binoculars, is quite full, so whatever he's been doing, he's found food somewhere. Now he's just disappearing behind the mound, unfortunately. So I'm going to try, Senzo, do you want me to go back a bit? Yeah. I think I'm going to try just go back, because he's walking back a little bit. I'm just seeing now. I just don't want to move too much because I don't want the Franklins to get a fright and run away and for him to lose an opportunity if he is hunting them. I don't think he's very sure what he wants to do. What are you doing, Tumba? <laughs> you can just see the tail flickering through the grass there. So Senzo's battling a bit with all the grass that's around. There we go, there's the little tail. 
take care you want to know what the strongest muscle is in a leopard now that's an interesting question I would imagine for me it must be either in the forearms or around the shoulder blades those muscles there should be the most powerful I don't think there would be many others but in relation to their, their power of their jaws would be quite interesting but most definitely you look at a structure of a leopard it's most of its weight is going to be over its front shoulders and that's where the biggest bulging muscles are so I would imagine those muscles that attach to the shoulder blades and the forearms are all going to be their most powerful that they've got He's still not sure about these Franklins. The Franklins are still pottering about there. They haven't made any noise yet, which means they haven't actually seen this leopard. But he's just sitting, kind of staring into the Franklins and watching what they're doing. I think he's a bit con completely taken aback by their brazen attitude towards him. It's interesting because I've seen with Tiani, when she was young at his age, there's not a chance that Franklin would have got anywhere near her. She would have been like a shot onto those Franklins. So it's interesting to see how there's a difference between accommodating of Franklin's walking right towards him. And Tumba's still learning this whole process and he's been fortunate in that he's had a mom that's fed him so well and I think it's now he's going to start learning some very hard lessons as to how, what he actually can feed off it's not going to be beautiful big impalas and kudus and waterbuck that mom has been feeding him over the last year he's going to have to start looking at lots of small animals in order to sustain himself Holly you're asking if you, you're wondering if Tumba will be bigger than Hosanna Holly, difficult to say. I mean, it's it's obviously there's genetics involved and there's all kinds of things and maybe this period of Hosanna not being with mom from such an early age might mean that he's slightly smaller well, development-wise through these years than what Tumba is. You must remember Tumba is six months younger than what Hosanna is and they're pretty much the same size already. So it'll be interesting to see. And you also find that some leopards go through different growth spurts. Some are going to get bigger, some are going to get smaller. And it's going to be an interesting process as to see this sort of development and to see how they go and whether or not he does end up being larger than Hosanna. It'll be an interesting competition between the two of them because they're both quite big boys already for their age. And just judging by Tumba's feet, I think he might end up being a little bit larger than what Hosanna would be. Uh, I think I'm going to just go back a little bit because from where we are there, that's not too bad. Thanks, Enzo. That's okay. You've got a nice gap now. I thought for a second that you wouldn't be able to see his head. Sorry, my fault. But Senzo's having to deal with lots of vegetation in front of this little leopard. Look, he's watching. He's not sure as to what to make of these Franklins. <laughs> Sammy, you're wondering what the pattern is for on a leopard is for. Now, I'm going to ask Senzo to zoom out a little bit, and you'll see exactly what the pattern is for. So if we come out more, Senzo, more, more, more. Right, now, can you see the leopard easily in that? No. So the pattern is there to break up the outline of this leopard. It makes it very difficult to see, particularly in dappled light that you see in shady areas like this. So the black spots help just to break up the outline that coloration that they've got blends in with the color of the grass as well as the shadowy areas and they become masters of camouflage so that's why they spotted is all to do with camouflage and nothing else but if you were driving past quickly to see that would be quite difficult but look at that isn't he beautiful yes we're talking about you you are probably the one of the most good-looking leopards in the Sabi sands I would say and it's just been such a treat to spend so much time with him over the last few months. You know, we've been spoiled with the sightings we've had of Tamba and Tandi and, you know, the, f the fact that when he was born, we have saw very little of him. The first sort of seven months or eight months of him being alive, we didn't get m many sightings at all. And now it seems as though he's one of our go-to leopards. And we've been so blessed to have been able to watch him as he's growing and as he's starting to get into adolescence and moving into his teenage years, so to speak. And to watch him as he develops has really been a treat. So I count ourselves very lucky to not only have him but Hosanna and Shongila and to watch these youngsters make their way in life is a very, very special thing. 
there's very few people in this world that will be able to do that and it's the best part about our job is that we're able to do this with all of you and to have the biggest safari vehicle in the world with all of you watching and to go through these trials and tribulations of these young cats the way that we do is such a special thing so i'm certainly very appreciative of the time we spend with them and i'm sure a lot of you are too and count ourselves very lucky that we can do this kind of thing and that we're in a s reserve in probably one of the best leopard viewing destinations in the world. But look, he's just watching. I think the Franklins have kind of passed him by. Tony, you say, come on, kitty, pounce. I don't think he's going to, Tony. Unfortunately, I think the Franklins have moved off a little bit, and he's just still watching them as they go. He's obviously not hungry enough yet to prompt him to go after things. I think he's going to move off shortly. He looks as though he's repositioning himself. Maybe not. Yep, there he goes. Now, hopefully, we need him to turn to the right and then come over the road and come northwards, because if he does that... We're going to be in the winning seat. Now I'm just going to start and try and head. Chris, how are you? Leroy. Now hopefully he's going to come towards us. I just want to go a little bit further forward here because I think he's going to pop out for us just here. We're going to just let all these cars. There he is there. But he's going to turn because there's too many vehicles I think. Unfortunately for us there's a number of private cars on this main road that are going to lodges and varying other things and I think that's going to turn him in the southerly direction. So I think while we see where he ends up going, let's go across to Tara and the ever sleepy Inkum Bride. Welcome back everybody. Amazing. It sounds like you had such a lovely sighting of Tamba. So we're getting a little bit more movement from these sleepy cats. We've had a few sort of stretches and yawns and as I say if they start yawning it means they're trying to get oxygen into their bloodstream so it can oxygenate their muscles and that tends to suggest that they're going to move. So yeah look at that. Good morning ladies. we were debating whether to maybe leave them have another little drive around and then come back but let's say we are getting a little bit of movement now the sun is losing the heat it's quite pleasant now <laughs> bit of a pathetic attempt that it's like do I really want to no, no. Don't really need it. <laughs> and actually, oh, we've got one of the cubs stretching now, just to the left of her. And the lioness that's just in the shot on the right, she's laid where the female who's got her head up decided to toilet, <laughs> which made both myself and Seb giggle because it was almost on top of the head of the cub. <laughs> she could have chosen anywhere, but no, she wanted to go there. And then the lioness decided that she was going to roll around in it. Hi, Snazzy. Snazzy saying, notice how they all sleep on their side. Now that's got to be a lot more comfortable. I have seen cats sleeping on their belly and on their back. There's one female that's almost rolling around on her back. Yeah, the female that's been yawning, she's getting up. Now she's already toileted, so I wonder if she's going to keep going. And I wonder if the other females are going to follow. Everyone else is very much aware that she is on the move. Hello, beautiful.
Hi, Melissa. Melissa asking any idea of who the fathers might be of the adult females. And I'm wondering if they could be the Mapojos, because they would have been in this area around that sort of time. Perhaps an older coalition, although the Mapojos kind of reigned across this area for a very long time an unusually long time but that's because they did number six in total which is oh look at that <laughs> that's exactly what i was like the other morning <laughs> but uh yeah because they had quite a large coalition six was able to fight off other coalitions so they kind of had quite a long tenure here Yes, Pisces, definitely, they do look very comfortable. But as I say, she, the other female, I've, she's just gone round the back of a termite mound. I've just lost sight of her, so if these decide to follow her, they might be getting up shortly and heading in a westerly direction. And as Tristan says, possibly heading after the buffalo that are around Gowrie Dam. Oh, there we go, a little cat, cat stretch there. Now oh, we might see some interaction with the cubs. They might start pouring each other, maybe having a little bit of a play. So it'd be interesting to get some input from uh, some viewers who have been watching for a very long time. I think they've done some backdating on the lions and the leopards and the backstories. So I think that would be my guess, would be the Mapojos. Capos asking what lion prides were around when I was last here. Well, certainly younger humours. I was actually reading back through my notes and they've not changed size too much. There were there were I think four females, four or five females when I was around. So that, that's what we've got here. But uh, certainly quite a number of cubs with them, so hopefully they'll survive. And then we also had the sticks who apparently are holding on still. The sticks were, they sounded like they were on the way out when I was around, but uh, we had the very old lady and a couple of females. But so they, it sounds like they've had some cubs survive and they've continued the, the pride. We did see the windmill pride occasionally. And. I'm trying to remember who BB belonged to. BB was a lioness who didn't have uh, a long tail, she had a stump. Uh, Are you going to join your sister or mother or <laughs> whatever the relation is? She was quite a dark nosed female, so she was quite old. Look at those beautiful teeth. So she is still quite young. Well, much younger than the other lioness that got up. Some nice clean teeth there. They start to discolour maybe around the seven, eight year old mark. She does have quite a dark nose, so she might be around the six, seven year old mark. Probably more on the six, looking at her teeth. Oh, nice white teeth. Yeah, lionesses can, can on average get to about 12 years of age. Males, maybe about 10. 
So not as long lived as leopards. Leopards can get up to, well, we've had two females reach about 19 years of age in the wild. Bless you. Okay, so she is still around. <laughs> but everyone's looked up. <laughs> so I think that's the, the female that got up. She's around the back of the termite mound. But oh, apparently uh, that was kind of the wake up call that everybody needed. Stations, these and Gala are slowly mobile in a westerly direction from Vulture Nest Road. Now we might get to see some interaction, maybe some nuzzling. Oh, we've got a female clawing the tree there, sharpening her claws. I'm sure you would have seen your domestic cats at home do that. On furniture, they're not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> going to say, I wonder if someone's going to stay behind. I think the cubs are probably old enough to stay by themselves, but they probably come with just to go and watch what goes on with the hunt. They wouldn't get involved at this stage. There we go. Also a sign of uh, territorial marking as well. I'm going to see, because I'm, I'm still seeing them around the termite mound, so I'm going to see if we can actually catch up with them and just see if there's any nuzzling or any interactions there. The rest of the cubs seem to be staying put. Oh no, they're also on the move, just as I say that. Oh, nice cat stretch. I think it might be better for us to go around that way. Ah, the Salalas. I had forgotten about the Salalas. I'm not overly familiar with them, but the name does ring a bell. The Majingis, I think, came in a little bit late for these lionesses, possibly, because the Mapokos got displaced by the Majingilans, and that was because they broke up. They didn't stay as a group of six. They started getting a little bit um, brave <laughs> and started going off in ones and, well, twos and threes, and obviously a lot more manageable numbers for the other, pri uh, other coalitions to pick off. Which is exactly what happened and then the downfall came with Mr T and Kinky Tail. There was a big clash and Mr T ran off, Kinky Tail got unfortunately killed by the Majingi lions because they'd actually killed one of the Majingi lions earlier that day. So the Majingi lions, it was like a retaliation and as I say Mr T ran off to the west almost to try and round up the rest of the Mapokos. Now I've seen actually that, that lioness that got up, she's already quite a few meters away just to our left. I can just see her over there. I thought this was all of them, but I think actually it might be behind a bush for you. Yeah. So she's gonna go into the Milwati by the looks of it. Oh, that would be amazing, wouldn't it, Joshua? Maybe these girls are going to get vocal. Not until they hunt, though. They're going to keep quiet for now. Hi, 
Hi, Joanne. Asking if lionesses hunt even when they're pregnant. And yes, they do. They've actually got quite a strong stomach muscle, which will hold the, uh, the cubs in place. But that's also why when the cubs are born, they're actually uh, very underdeveloped. Because uh, obviously if they develop too much, then they're going to be too bulky for the female and it would actually slow her down. And so I'm just going to try and navigate my way through these trees. I'm almost tempted that maybe we should just go out onto the road and try and catch them coming up, but we might just miss them coming out. Because if they go up the, the Milwati towards the dam, But yeah, as I say, that's uh, why they actually get born underdeveloped, so that uh, they don't have any issues while they're hunting as well. So we're going to... Oh, look at this. Oh, magic. There's <laughs> one coming. Hello, beautiful. I'm not sure what's just uh, what they're not sure about on the vehicle. you. Yeah. Larger female decided, you know what, I'm going to go around the other side. <laughs> Paul saying, so beautiful. And they are, hey. Absolutely magic. Jenny animation saying instant love, definitely. Okay, and I am remembering actually there is a tree down in the Milwati, so I'm thinking I might see if I can maybe head out back onto Central possibly and see if we can catch them up there. But I'll see if we can try and keep them. Yeah, I'll see if we can try and stick with them as far as I can. Oh, so it sounds like we're both in the bush. <laughs> Bunda bashing, trying to keep up with Cat. So I think we're going to see how Tristan's getting on with his spotted cat while we cope up with our cats. So enjoy. <laughs> well, we have unfortunately lost Tumba. He went chasing after some impalas southwards and we couldn't get another visual of him at all. But, 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 we are about to make this day get even better because our mating pair of Tandy and Tumba are moving straight towards Cheetah Cut Line, not far from where I am right now. So we're going to be making our way slowly in that direction in the hope that we see another two leopards. And wouldn't that just be the cherry on top for a wonderful, wonderful day at Juma Game Reserve? I think so. What do you think, Senzo? Beautiful. Beautiful is what Senzo says. Well done, Senzo. I agree. And Senzo today, I actually think we might put him on camera just now because Senzo is looking quite dapper today. He's got his 
green t-shirt on and a, have you still got your belt on Senzo? Yeah. Senzo has got his brightly colored belt, a brightly colored headdress and we'll have to we'll have to put him on camera. In fact, I think now's the best time. Senzo, now's the time. I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, he's got to put on his headband quickly, so hold on. Senzo's got to put in his headband. And also, wait, just hold on, Senzo. We need to get the light right for you as well, because we can't put him that you can't see him. But this is going to be special, and we're going to ask him to draw like a lion for Lion Day today. That's what we're going to do, Senzo. That's what you've got to do, I'm afraid. <laughs> Why not in front of the camera? He says he'll do it behind the scenes. Okay, but you've got to show us yourself first, and then you can roar like a lion without the camera on you. All right, that's the deal. We'll make a we'll compromise, because we're all about compromise in this area. So, hold on, Senzo. I'm going to get you in some beautiful light now. Just give me two seconds while we wait for these leopards to come our way. So, here we go. All right, Senzo. Okay, you ready, buddy? So, everybody, this is what Senzo looks like today. Hold on, Senzo. There we go. You see, he's got his sunglasses on, he's got his headband, he's got his necklace, his Safari Live t-shirt, looking very dapper, his bracelets. Well done, Senzo, okay. And then you're gonna have to roar like a lion for us at some point. Would you want to do it now? Not now. Not now? Yeah, it's Later. Surprise, yeah. It's a surprise, yeah. when I'm not ready for it. Okay, so Senzo says when I'm not ready for it. We'll do it with the setting sun, there we go. It'll be like a Lion King moment. We'll put you on a rock and then we'll do it like a sunset moment now interestingly enough it sounds like which is very cool ah i think what is that there senzo can you see something straight down the fire break i saw something uh it's just a diker i think or is it a diker you see it on the fire break on the right hand side there senzo if you just go straight in just to the right a little bit other way on the right, that one, yeah, straight in there, just behind that tree there. There's something lurking there. It looks like a diker. See it there? There we go. I'm going to go forward slightly. Hold on. Sorry, Senzo, that's backwards. I've got to go the other one. So you... There we go. What is it? it looks like a steenbok. I would say. So that's another species to add to our ever-growing list for this afternoon. It looks like a male steenbok that is just sitting there and is watching what's going on. Now this is a place that they'll actually see them, well they spend a lot of time, particularly at night, they'll come out and they'll lie here so as to stay away from predators. So this is where they spend time. Now I have word that there's apparently a third leopard that has joined Tundi and Tumba. I mean not Tumba, so used to saying Tundi and Tumba, but Tundi and Tingana. And they are still moving generally in our direction, but I'm trying to listen to the radio just to see exactly where they are. It sounds like they almost on Cheetah Cut Line now. So hopefully we'll be able to get into the sighting just now. I'm just puttering about, waiting and hoping that they pop out. And wouldn't it be nice if we got three leopards? And I would imagine that the third leopard, given that this morning Hosanna was there, would be Hosanna. And that would just be the most perfect day, I think, and I hope then that Tara with the Nkuhumas, they walk along and as she leaves the Nkuhumas, she finds Shongile. I think that would be the best afternoon we could have hoped for if we get these three as well. Now talking about Tara, I'm sure she's having a tough time because if those lions are moving the way that I think they are, she's going to be dodging bushes left, right and centre. Yeah, well, we definitely were. Um, we were struggling to keep up with them. So what we're trying to do is see if we can get ahead of them and see where they're going to come in, cut down. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they're going to pop out here, but we might just try and drive in here and see if we can get sight of them again. But we've just, we're literally on the other side of where they were going to. So hopefully somewhere here, they might go straight into the drainage line. So let's just try and cut in here. I was hoping to try and get a audio from them, maybe something that they startled. So it just gets very thick bush here. Hi. 
Okay, Lion and Rushdie. Do lions hunt more at dawn or dusk? Depends on when they're hungry and when the opportunity is. I wonder if I can actually get in here, because that would be nice if we could actually drive into the drainage line. Oh, that's not looking possible there. Let's just try a little bit further on. It's very thick through there. Perhaps we should try around the other side. Unless I can get in and down there. Or we just go and chill by the buffalo. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I'm not seeing anything there. Oh, because they might even take Twin Dams Road up. Oh, so I think Tristan's managed to catch up with the leopards again. So while we try and bundle better way out of here again, we'll go over and see what he's up to. <laughs> Well, there we go. There's our beast of a leopard, Tingana. He's the big boy around here and walking straight south. I've got no sign of Tandi yet or Hosanna. I think Hosanna is to the north of me and Tingana is just mobile now straight southwards. I'm going to quickly just turn for you, Senzo, because we're going to obviously have to try and keep up with him. It seems like they've been on an absolute mission today. So I'm trying to just see if I can move. And I also want to try and get out of the shot of some of the guys that are here on a photographic Tour. So I'm just trying to move out of their way so that they can get the photos that they need But it is beautiful to see him. He's an absolutely monstrous leopard when you've been looking at Tumba and Hosanna for a while and I haven't seen Tingana for a long time It means that he really is a lot bigger than I remember him But look he's going to walk straight through the Sun. I can actually see Tandi now as well This is so cool. Aren't we being spoiled today? I think we're being absolutely spoiled. Now, I believe a lot of you are very happy about what's been going on. Now, I might take a sneaky little picture just to see Tingana as he strolls through this territory and they are on collision course now straight towards where Tumba is so where, Tum where I left Tumba they are walking straight towards that area it's going to be quite spectacular Senzo let's go forward to get Tandi because she's walking in the most exquisite light now T Tingana there and there comes Tandi now look at this beautiful light that she's in isn't that magnificent So she's striding, much like what Tingana is doing, she's also striding through. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? We couldn't have asked for a better sighting. This is absolutely spectacular. And she is my favorite leopard of the females. She is absolutely beautiful. Well, 
on the same trail of these two and following in behind now interestingly enough i reckon us crashing through the bush might just attract little tumba this way and we might soon see a little leopard fiesta or fiasco as tar i mean taylor once called it that was i heard all about that now i'm just going to try and see if i can get around because oh without hitting myself in the face that will probably be more preferable <clears throat> okay senzo hold on the problem with these two leopards is once we lose sight of them we're going to have a big problem so that's why i'm trying to get around things quite quickly before they cross because otherwise we're not going to be able to keep up with them but here is a road which is fantastic news yeah. hopefully the two of them are sitting on the road but it's not likely i'm pretty sure they're crossing although the nice thing is i know where they're going there we go there they go go up on the mound come on tandy up on your mound come on but interesting as well, other than Tandi and, and Tingana and Tumba and, and Hosanna to worry about, we also have to think that the Nkuhum is on Twin Dams. Now we are heading straight to Twin Dams Road. Now if they turn north up Twin Dams Road, there might then potentially be a collision course between Leopard and Lion. Now what have you seen, Tandi? No, nothing to worry about. Okay, Senzo, there's going to be a slight bump. Slight being probably a gross exaggeration as what's about to happen, so hold on. Oh, there we go. So, so Tara apparently also was talking about leopards and lions, if they encounter one another, what actually happens and whether or not they engage with one another. Well, lions most certainly will chase leopards hands down every single time. And as Tara mentioned, the sticks are leopard haters of note. They've killed at least one leopard that I know of, possibly two. So, and I know that this morning they were chasing Anderson male. So Anderson male has had a rough week. I think he was chased by the Inkahumas and then he was chased by the sticks as well. So it does happen from time to time. I have seen also, funny enough, down in the south of the reserve, there was a male leopard called the Chilunga male. Now, I'm not sure if any of you have ever heard of Chilunga male, but Chilunga male was a interesting individual. He developed a habit of hunting leopard cubs, I mean lion cubs, and he managed to get himself four lion cubs before a female le lion actually got him. So he was played a dangerous game and he actually lost the game in the end. Ooh, Tandy, you look so pretty in this light. Don't know, is that okay to say to a leopard? I'm not quite sure. Hopefully she likes it. Now, where is Tingana? I think she's also lost sight of Tingana, much like we have at this stage. I hear a Franklin calling here, though. Is, do you see him, Senzo? Oh, there he is in front. Okay, I can see him now as well. So you see she's listening now to the Franklin as well. So the Franklin caught my ear, and so did it catch Tundi's ear. So Tundi's just checking to see is there anything there. And then Tingana, like I say, is just in front of us. But they are heading into the Mulawati and their direction has definitely changed. We're heading now in a much more northerly direction. And so hopefully we're not going to get... Where am I going to go from here? You know what, Senzo? Let's change direction here slightly. What's she running after? She's running after something. See. Now, I don't know what she's chasing, but she's chasing something. You can see her just running in front here. I'm trying to get through as quick as I can, but it is not easy in here. What have you seen? She's seen something. Look at how she's twitching her tail. Franklin is alarm calling. I don't know where Tingana has gone from now, but she's definitely spotted an opportunity potentially for food. The way her body language has changed is not that of spotting Tingana. There, she's chasing a diker. That's what she's chasing. Let's see, she, I saw the diker just bolt off. Let's see if we can keep up with her. Not only have we have mating leopards, we have hunting leopards, lions on the move. Oh, it's all happening today. I'm going to try and sneak through here somehow. Now, of course, if Tandi does kill this, even if Tingana's not here now, he's going to come running in here and come and take that kill if she did manage. 
Now where did she go? Saw her running this way. Exquisite bliss, you say go get it girl. Well I agree, but don't get it so fast that we can't find you. Now where's she gone? Oh no. This is not going well. Now there's a number of people that are trying to call me on the radio as well that are trying to find me, but I've lost sight of Tandy. Now I'm gonna try and see if I can't find Tandy quickly, and while we do that, let's go back to Tara and her lioness. Hi everybody, you might notice this lioness has got a sight set on something and we're actually opposite a Nyala bull at the moment. We've just, we clocked the Nyala bull, so we've actually gone ahead of them. She's further back and she's clocked him as well, but he's actually on the opposite side of the road to where she is. So we're expecting that she might cross over and maybe try and hunt him somewhere in this bush. I've lost, lost sight of the male Nyala. I think she might still have it in sight, maybe, but she's looking a little bit more relaxed. And there is actually, there's an, another, let me just see, it looks like a female Nyala walking down the road. Yeah. So they're walking down the road. I don't think they've seen her yet. So just to try and give you an idea, we're actually at, there's an open area uh, just south of Juma Dam, uh, Juma Dam, Gary Dam. So she's a good, what, 100, 150, something like that meters from us. The Nyala are just, coming up to the junction, going onto the dam wall now. She hasn't seen them, I don't think. I, don't, I think her sights are still on that Nyala ball that went in opposite us. So I think these Nyala might follow him in. She's not looking at them as yet. Oh, she is now. Yeah, I think. But she doesn't look as keen as what she did for the male. There we go, a little bit more of an interest now. The ears are forward, the eyes are forward. She's very still. Oh, there goes the tail. She is interested. Now, if she's gonna follow it up, I'd expect to see her start to go into stalk mode, keeping low, maybe going onto the next bush, or maybe trying to cross the road. The wind is in her favour. It is actually flowing down from the Niala to her. Oh, the male's come back. Now I did hear there was a squirrel just to the right. He, he might have caught wind of something. Somehow, yeah, he's just looked over his shoulder. I think he's seen them. Uh, he's just joined them. They're all, they're all fleeing over to the left. <laughs> he just came running out the bush. And as I say, I did hear a squirrel, and I'm wondering if he listened to the squirrel and maybe saw saw the lions. But yeah, there they go. White tail, very much. Get out of here. <laughs> well, that's game over for you, lady. <laughs> yeah, a few, few of you getting a bit worried about these Nyala. 
Well, I think someone gave the game away. As I say, there was a squirrel just in the dead tree over there that I was hearing. Yeah, there we go. The, the lions are on the move now. Yeah, game has been given away. And the Nyala is safe for another day. She's on the lookout again by the looks of it. So here she comes, she's going to come up the road again. Let's see if there's anything around in the drainage line. Maybe she's caught scent of something. As I say, the wind is blowing towards her. Not from the drainage line, it's actually going from us down towards her now. going into the drainage line. Perhaps they have caught scent of something. We didn't see the buffalo in the dam. Yeah, Shay, definitely, if the buff were there. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> if the buff were there, they would definitely have to watch out for lines. Yeah, there they go. They're just in front of us now, actually, coming through. So I'm just wondering, maybe we should make our way down towards the dam. They might come down and drink. It might be quite interesting to see if they're going to look out over the dam and see if there's anything around there. So let's have a look. I don't think there's anything else so far. No. So cheeky. No, I thought I had it in my head then. <laughs> cheeky deaky Beth saying squirrels. Is it a menace of the bush? <laughs> Oh, the snitches of the bush. True, but if you had a line on your tail, wouldn't you want the squirrel on your side? Maybe. <laughs> I would say possibly. So I think we, we're gonna stay with these lines, just see what they do. Just say they might go down to the water to drink they have been having quite a, a nice lack of snooze this afternoon. So we'll see where they pop out and what they do. But in the meantime, enjoy the spots with Tristan. Well, finally, a, a hiatus in the frenzy that has been this afternoon. And Tingana is now just sitting and waiting for Tundi to come back. Tundi quickly ran off and we didn't, weren't able to find her again so he's now just sitting I think waiting and hoping that she finds him again it's quite interesting because he marches away from her and growls at her but then when she runs away he decides to lie down again now I just need to guide a vehicle in because otherwise I don't think they're going to find us so I'm waiting to hear them and once I hear them I'll be able to call them but Senzo says he'll be able to watch out and let me know when he does see them but you can see Tingan is now perfectly blended in and it's quite a miracle actually that we found him if it wasn't for Senzo being able to see him just now moving in this direction i don't think we would have come back and been able to see him again so it's good that he lay down for us at least but you can see he's just listening now and I'm, like i say i'm pretty sure tundi will be back if she didn't kill that diker she most certainly will be back and if she had killed the diker we would have definitely heard it a diker does make a little bit of a noise when it gets killed and we didn't hear anything and heard a couple birds alarm calling so it's definitely that she didn't kill. I'm sure she's trying to come. Uh, yours, you can just keep coming north. I can hear you just south of me. Just keep coming north. So, like I say, just trying to get somebody else into the sighting. They, it's difficult to, to explain to them exactly where we are because of the dense, thick area. But he should be able to see me from 
from the road. Ah, and apparently Tundi is behind us now walking straight towards us as well, which is fantastic news. So they should join up quickly now and hopefully they're going to go towards twin dams but it's going to be very thick in here here comes Tandi she's panting a little bit unfortunately because I'm sure she's exerted a bit of energy trying to chase that diker away right here we go Senza are you ready okay because this is gonna be a rough one through here but I know a little shortcut through a certain area oh that was a bit of a bump there Now let's see, I wonder, can I get over this? Let's try. Come on Wendy, come on. There we go. There we go, we got through there, well done. Okay. Right, Senzo, you're our spotter to keep us. Uh, here she is. Look how she's got her nose down. She's busy trying to sniff where he's gone. Look, now she's trotting. Shame, girl. Are you trying to find him again? I must be honest. I do like when leopards run like that. It's almost like they got this little bounce, like they from sort of Tigger days, from Winnie the Pooh. That's how I always think of them. But oh, she can move quickly. Now I'm very glad that I've done a few bushwalks in this area because I roughly know where we're going to have to go to keep up with them. It's not going to be easy, but we certainly will try. Um, of course, it's much easier on foot to negotiate this than it is... I can see her just on my right. Oh, Wendy, you're such a champion. So Wendy's being an absolute delight. She's going like a dream, which I can see him and... I they're going to come out into this clearing right here and this pathway that we're on now takes us to a little clearing and then we'll drop down into the Mulawati towards Twin Dams which is fantastic so there we go there's Tandi in front and Tum Tingana is just to our right this Tingana Tumba story is going to be the, the death of me I think I, I can't I keep getting them tongue-tied. They both start with T's, and then it's certainly not easy to remember who's who. And just because we always go Tandi Tumba, if, uh, yes, Alice, just like Tara and Taylor, you see, it's all T's. You would think I would be good at T's, given my name starts with a T, but, well, it seems as though I've just got no chance. Maybe it's because I'm just too excited about today. I don't know. Could be that, too. It smells like popcorn, everybody. It's a very strong scent of popcorn. Obviously, Tingana has just given a little deposit here. Um, Senzo, are you ready for the really thick stuff? Okay, good. Okay, here we go. Actually, it's not too bad. I remember now where we are. We're not too bad. They're gonna go through a little Tamburti thicket, and then it should actually be all right. They've been very kind to us because if they had gone to the right we would have had a problem But they've luckily stayed on a pathway that allows us to be able to follow them, which is fantastic I see Tangana. He's down in the Mulawati already So I'm gonna try and find a way just to get down to where they are Tandi will sh probably shortly join him So while I try and negotiate my way down to the Mulawati Let's go back to Tara and the lioness who's making a way to Gari Dam Which is great news because remember the buffalo were there earlier Go ahead, yours. Welcome back. Good look, Trist. The Milwati can be quite difficult to navigate. <laughs> but yes, they have just stopped just by the road that leads onto the dam wall. I think they're surveying, seeing if there is anything about. So the youngster is actually making her way. You know, the two the two youngsters I think if there was anything they would be spoiling it by now so the other she's kind of giving them a look as a, to say well, what are you doing <laughs> you're on the wood. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, just on the road, yeah. Yeah, we can, we can go forward. Yeah, Texan, there's two that are slowly fambering towards the Manzi now. <laughs> oh, nice scratch. I would offer to come and scratch your back, but uh, I, I think I'll leave that one. <laughs> She's really getting irritated by the flies, though. Yeah, and I'm seeing the rest of the pride catching up to the female we just left lying down there. There we go, she's getting up now. So I'm thinking maybe we go down to the water's edge and see if we can get them drinking nicely. We might even join the other vehicles on the other opposite side. Oh, they are going over the wall. Hey Francis in Israel. Ah, oh, hearing alarm calls. I think there we go. Baboons have seen the lions. <laughs> Francis Israel would like to know if the cubs are old enough to partake in the hunt. And they are a little bit small at the moment, so they'll watch from the sidelines. I just heard someone else just picked up. Yeah, the Impala just over on the on the uh, northern side of the plane, picking up what the baboons are telling them as well. Are we picking up the the alarm calls of the Impala, or are they a bit far? No, I think they can pick them up. <laughs> Not phased whatsoever. It's like, well, yes, I'm sat out here. Of course, you can see me. Snazzy, saying they look so strong. Is it fat or, mu or muscle? And it is pure muscle. There's not a single shred of fat on them. They are just pure power. <laughs> There's Impala really hitting home. We have seen you. <laughs> Do not bother trying to hunt us. Should we go on the down wall yeah. and maybe turn around? Yeah, it looks like they're going down to that side there, so let's see. See them from the wall. And here comes the rest of the pride again. So I think lucky for the buffalo, he has moved off. Was it a, a single one or was it a group of buffalo? I didn't get that. Three buffalo, okay. Yep, so these la these ladies could, could take down the one. Okay, well she's gone into the drainage line there. So apparently she's not thirsty. So we'll also be able to see what she does from the dam wall as well. Just keep an eye on her, because you never know, there might be something in there now. There wasn't when we crossed over, but it's, Definitely a place that the antelope like to hang out. And I think possibly she knows that too. Now she might come up through here instead. Uh, nope, she's going to carry on through. Oh, lovely. <laughs> say, are you going to come up here? There is a bit of a game trail. Possibly going to... Yeah, make a way up onto the wall from this side. <laughs> there you 
you go. Look at that. That is experience right there. Ears flat, trying to keep as low as she can. But unfortunately, her pride mates don't know that game. <laughs> they are lounging about right out in the open, giving the game away. Oh, brilliant. Campy and Dewey. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> she came up there so magnificently. As I say, experience and everything. Had there been something here, she would have been able to take full advantage of that. But no, the kids had to get down to the water. <laughs> but... Sorry, the name has popped out my head. I'm so sorry. Can you repeat the name for me, please? Ah. Champy and Dewey's mummy. Sorry. Just enjoying the sighting just as much as you. And apparently this is your first sunset ah. safari. Ah. <laughs> there go the hardy dars. I'm so thrilled that this is your first safari and you're loving it. And how can you not? It's been an action-packed safari. Had lions on Lion Day, World Lion Day. And we've had a wonderful sighting of the leopards, the mating leopards and tamba as well, I believe. It really has been a fantastic afternoon. Oh, so the, the lioness that's on her back is the one that's got the uh, wound, so she's uh, probably airing it out. So the rest of the Pride members are just off to my right, they're, they're just, I can just see them dotted into the bushes, but uh, <laughs> I think certainly got to make the most of this. Look at that. <laughs> ah, okay, so just getting an update. The buffalo actually moved off uh, on the opposite side to where the lines are. Uh, so away from the camera, actually behind where the vehicles are. I was going to say, I didn't see any tracks. Oh, here come a couple of cubs to join the experienced lady on the wall. Move my head out the way for you. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, I see this little one here. This one had the stance. Yeah, and this is from the other one behind. The ears were flat. So, hey, learning. There we go. Look at that. Keeping very close to the wall. Keeping a low profile just in case there is something. Oh, going into stalk mode. Well, you've heard of a zebra crossing, I'm sure. How about a lion crossing? We have a lion roadblock. And there's no other roadblock I would love to have. <laughs> As the sun sets over the African continent, its top predator deciding to spend an evening with us. Definitely, Karen. No moving now. <laughs> Look at 
the hat. Oh, you can see quite a big size difference there. I think that one behind could be a little male. You can see there's some, <laughs> some thicker fur on the back of the neck, possibly, coming through. Uh, the, the two that were that sat side by side, there's quite a big size difference, even for a month. Season. Yeah, so I'm wondering if that one's going to be a little male. There is a bit of thickening, potentially around the back of the ears. Or well, it could just be that it, there is just quite a big difference. Oh, roller, go to bed. Roller displaying over the water there, that's what you can hear. Yeah, one of them's got a beauty spot. Yes, she has. Yes, you are beautiful. Look at you. Oh, and you know it. Okay, sorry, I'm just getting a, an update from Seb. He's going to switch to infrared, so it is going to go black and white, just to warn you. <laughs> so don't, don't adjust your TV set. <laughs> <laughs> We're going old school. And just as regal in black and white. How's that for a picture? Well, I hope you're enjoying Safari Live here on World Lion Day. And the cats really came out to celebrate. Now this is the African lion. There is an Asiatic lion as well, which is found in India. But unfortunately, the lions over in India are not great for numbers. There's only around 300 left, only found in the Gaia forest in India. So they are extremely endangered. But unfortunately, if we're not careful with the conservation of the lion here in Africa, we could end up with very small pockets of lion. Who may become inbred if they're not if we're not careful. So we do have to really think about conserving the lion. I know there's a lot of organizations out there that are trying their level best to make sure that the African lion stays on the planet, which obviously is very important because they are the top predator and predators are needed to keep the bush in good working order because if there's no predators around the herbivores will eat everything and damage the bush beyond repair so you do need the predators just to take out enough herbivores So the bottom line is, we need these predators, we need the carnivores to make sure that the whole ecosystem is healthy. Lions have all the time in the world. <laughs> if we're lucky, you never know, we might get some calling, which would be amazing. It would just round off the whole day to have the lions calling. 
Now, if they call, it would be marking the territory. But as I say, they're probably going to keep quiet because they are in hunting mode, or certainly the, the female in front of us is in hunting mode. The rest of the pride <laughs> don't seem to be too bothered. <laughs> so I think perhaps they're waiting for darkness. Riti saying, I wish something, but I miss what you wish. Ah, Riti wishing she could be sat next to me and Seb. Yes, <laughs> you do. <laughs> I can't, I can't lie. <laughs> this is perfect. Hi, John, asking what my favorite thing is about lions. Sure, I think it is just that pure power. There is something quite spectacular about them. What about you, Seb? What's your favorite thing about lions? Um, their pa their patience. The patience, yeah. <laughs> Put, puts us uh, definitely to shame, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we're talking about you. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And I think their eyes, their piercing eyes, they just look into your soul. When they can be bothered to look at you, of course. That typical pose of a cat. Give me attention, but don't give me attention. I'll just sit here in front of you and just look away. Definitely, Suzanne, we are so blessed to see this. And so relaxed. Ah. An update from Tristan. Apparently the leopards, he reckons, are going to make the way here in the next hour or so. So definitely keep watching the camera that we have here at Juma Game Reserve. Uh, it's actually at the Gary Dam, so this dam here. So if you want to carry on watching the lions on the cam, they are right in front of it. So I'm hoping they're going to keep giving you an awesome show. And you never know, you might see some action from the other group coming down to drink as well. So definitely keep your eyes peeled on the Juma waterhole camera tonight, folks. It has been an absolutely fantastic World Lion Day here on Safari Live. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. It really has been quite spectacular. Oh, there we go. The rest of the pride coming in. It's been wonderful having Seb back. Thank you so much, Seb. And thank you all so much for all your comments and questions. It really does make this such a special, special program. And I'm so glad we could share this with so many of you. Thank you. And enjoy these lines further. <laughs>